back. Jesse, watching Free Speech TV in Miami, Florida. You're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Okay. Hey, hi, Tom. Congressman. Hey, I want to pick up on something Tom said before that's very important. And I want to connect it to where you stand on the Chinese intellectual property rights. Tom said he wouldn't mind not having property rights if he had the cure for cancer. Just curing cancer would be motivation enough for him. He wouldn't need a pyramid of money. And the Chinese is pretty much going along with that idea. But Tom says, shouldn't somebody get something for curing cancer? But he backed it up by saying, I really would be happy just curing cancer. So, Congressman, where would you stand on something like that? Because the monopolization of inequality is the biggest reason for wealth and inequality in the world now. So where do you stand on the Chinese property rights? Thanks. Yeah, well, I don't know if it's as simple uh, as, as you're asking, Jesse, if I can just offer a little bit longer on, on that. First of all, uh, when it comes to prescription drug companies, there's many levels of issues we have and as it comes to intellectual property. One of the problems are companies are taking the rights they have, the time that expires, and they're finding ways to extend it and extend it and extend it. And yesterday I had a chance to question one of the agencies specifically around insulin, where the cost has gone up tremendously and they make these little tweaks to stop any generic production. So uh, should people who come up with a cure for cancer uh, get something out of it? Yes, and that is part of why we have intellectual property laws. Here's the interesting statistic, though. Um, the Bayh-Dole Act, uh, which essentially um, talked about our, our ability to go back and try to get something if NIH dollars have been used in the finding the cure, so it's not just the research dollars from the company. Interestingly, there's a study that just came out between 2010 and 2016. I think there were 210 drugs, uh, somewhere in that area, approved by the FDA, all of them had NIH research behind them. And I think wow. part of the question is, we're already paying for a lot of that research. So they've started to back off saying they're recouping research and development costs, and now they're trying to make a complex formula no one can understand. But there is a greed in the system that we're trying to address. I don't think it's going after someone who intellectual property-wise came up with a cure for cancer deserves a benefit. But when drugs now, some drugs are costing 750000 for the dosage or 200000 like ALS, and I have neuroscientists coming in saying, you know, I can't actually give this to a patient who could benefit. That's what we're really trying to address um, through, through, I think, a lot of the work we're doing on prescription drugs. And did you see the Goldman Sachs internal investment report that was issued uh, earlier this week that said no, that uh, cures are a bad business model for pharma? They, they, they used the example of Gilead Sciences, which developed Harvoni, yeah. the anti-hep C drug. Yep. They sold $15 billion worth in the first year. They're down to $4 billion worth now because they've cured most of the hep C in the country. Yeah. And they've, they've sucked up all the, all the people who are able to pay 80000 or whose insurance companies are willing to. And they're saying, you know, really, we should be looking at palliative care. You know, it's... Yeah. Right. Uh, this, yeah. is, this is just the, the short-sightedness of this industry. And they want to monetize everything, right? And they're going to find every way possible. And, you know, insulin is just a really good example. It's been around for a long, long time. It should have generic equivalents out there. And we're having a battle because they do these little tweaks. So yeah. I, I'm going, going farther than Jesse's question, but I think it's really where the center of this conversation has to happen. Yeah, insulin was discovered, what, in the 18th century? <laughs> 19th century? And we still can't get generic equivalents. Right. That's, that's nuts. Congressman Mark Pocan taking your calls. More right after.